The Science of Being Well by Wallace D. Wattle Chapter 4 What to Think In order to sever all mental relations with disease, you must enter into mental relations with health, making the process positive, not negative, one of assumption, not of rejection. You are to receive or appropriate health rather than reject or deny disease. Denying disease accomplishes next to nothing. It does little good to cast out the devil and leave the house vacant, for he will presently return with others worse than himself. When you enter into full and constant mental relations with health, you must, of necessity, cease all relationship with disease. The first step of the science of being well is, then, to enter into complete thought connection with health. The best way to do this is to form a mental image or picture of yourself as being well, imagining a perfectly strong and healthy body, and to spend sufficient time in contemplating this image to make it your habitual thought of yourself. This is not so easy as it sounds. It necessitates the taking of considerable time for meditation, and not all persons have the imaging faculty well enough developed to form a distinct mental picture of themselves in a perfect or idealized body. It is much easier, as in the science of getting rich, to form a mental image of the things one wants to have, for we have seen these things or their counterparts, and we know how they look. We can picture them very easily from memory, but we have never seen ourselves in a perfect body, and a clear mental image is hard to form. It is not necessary or essential, however, to have a clear mental image of yourself as you wish to be. It is only essential to form a conception of perfect health and to relate yourself to it. This conception of health is not a mental picture of a particular thing. It is an understanding of health and carries with it the idea of perfect functioning in every part and organ. You may try to picture yourself as perfect in physique. That helps. And you must think of yourself as doing everything in a manner of perfectly strong and healthy person. You can picture yourself as walking down the street with an erect body and a vigorous stride. You can picture yourself as doing your day's work easily and with surplus vigor. Never tired, weak. You can picture yourself in your mind how all things would be done by a person of full of health of health and power. And you can make yourself the central figure in the picture, doing things in just that way. Never think of the ways in which weak or sickly people do things. Always think of the way strong people do things. Spend your leisure time in thinking about the strong way until you have a good conception of it, and always think of yourself in, conce in connection with the strong way of doing things. This is what I mean by having a conception of health. In order to establish perfect functioning for every part, man does not have to study anatomy or physiology so that he can form a mental image of, to each separate organ and dress himself to it. He does not have to treat his liver, his kidneys, his stomach, or his heart. There is one picture of health in man, which has control over all the involuntary functions of his life, and the thought of perfect health impressed upon this principle will reach each part and organ. Man's liver is not controlled by a liver principle, his stomach by a digestive principle, and so on. The principle of health is one. The less you go into detailed study of physiology, the better for you. Our knowledge of the science is very imperfect. It leads to imperfect thought. Imperfect thought causes imperfect functioning, which is disease. Let me illustrate. Until quite recently, physiology fixed 10 days as the extreme limit of a man's endurance without food. It was considered that only in exceptional cases could he survive a longer fast. So the impression became universally disseminated that one who was deprived of food must die from 5 to 10 days. And numbers of people when cut off from food for by shipwreck, accident, or famine, did die within this period. But the performance of Dr. Tanner, the 40-day faster, and the writings of Dr. Dewey and others on the fasting cure, together with the experiments of numberless people who have fasted from 40 to 60 days, has shown that man's ability to live without food is vastly greater than had been supposed. Any person, properly educated, can fast from 20 to 40 days with little loss of, in weight, and often with no apparent loss of strength at all. The people who starved to death in 10 days or less did so because they believed death was inevitable, and erroneous physiology had given them a wrong thought about themselves. When a man is deprived of food, he will die in, in from 10 to 50 days according to the way he has been taught, or in other words, according to the way he thinks about it. So you can see that an erroneous physiology can work very mischievous results. No science of being well can be founded on current physiology. It is not sufficiently exact in its knowledge. You need to subscribe to this channel. You need to subscribe to this channel. You need to subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to the Artistic Biker now. Click the buttons.